The OPPG Dynamic Stand is a device designed, tested and patented by the Bambino Gesù Children's Hospital in Rome, Italy, in collaboration with SIDAM and Evoluzione. It is used for the treatment of benign esophageal strictures when they are recurrent or refractory to endoscopic dilations. The OPPG Dynamic Stand maintains esophageal patency and, at the same time, allows the natural motility of the esophagus, as well as its dynamic dilation during swallowing and feeding. The packaging includes the stand incorporated in a nasogastric tube, radio pack skin markers, a small silicone bar for the retention of the tube at the patient's nostril. A double port for enteral feeding or administration of drugs through the tube, with two different lumen sizes. A thin probe for the passage of the tube from the nasopharynx during placement. A dermographic pen and a ruler. The stand has tapered ends with two radiopaque marks, allowing verification of the stand position by X-ray, both during placement and during follow-up, if necessary for suspect displacement. The stand size is established prior to the placement procedure, based on the diameter and length of the esophageal stricture, which has been previously evaluated and dilated. The length of the stent should exceed the length of the stricture by at least 3 or 4 cm to guarantee the action of the device along the entire stricture, despite a slight mobility. The stent diameter should be the maximum achievable for the patient, considering the age and the possibility of stricture dilation. The stent tube has dual function to keep the stent in the correct position at the stricture level and to allow the administration of enteral nutrition and or drugs, if necessary. The distal end of the tube is expected to be located in the stomach, but it may rarely migrate post-pyloric. The proximal end of the tube, with the double port and silicone bar, comes out from the patient's nostril. The stent is placed during endoscopic procedure, under general anesthesia and with the indispensable aid of X-ray scanning. Serial esophageal dilations are performed until the desired diameter for stent insertion is reached. Therefore, the equipment for dilation must be available. A stiff guide wire, esophageal dilators of increasing diameter, and flexible video gastroscopes, standard and slim. The use of semi-rigid bougie dilators is recommended to achieve the appropriate calibre along the entire stricture. After completing dilations, it is necessary to perform an endoscopic and fluoroscopic check to exclude any leakage.
it is recommended to use an isotonic water-soluble contrast medium injected through the operating channel of the endoscope. The residual contrast medium must be aspirated so as not to interfere with the following phases. Once the desired esophageal diameter has been reached and leaks have been excluded, it is necessary to mark the proximal and distal ends of the stricture in order to put the stent in the correct position. Radiopack skin markers are prepared with a plaster for application on the patient's chest. Under radiological guidance, the tip of the endoscope is positioned at the proximal end of the stricture, while a radiopack object is used to find the corresponding site on the patient's chest. The point is marked with the demographic pen and then with the application of the marker. The operation is then repeated for the distal end of the stricture. It is important that the skin markers are maintained or renewed by the family for the entire period in which the stent is in place. Indeed, they allow to verify the correct position of the stent by X-ray during follow-up. The length of the stricture is checked with the ruler to verify the correct size of the stent. After the above-mentioned steps, it is possible to introduce the stent. The guide wire used for the esophageal dilations, left in place, is used also for the stent placement. The stent is introduced and advanced on the guide wire under radiological control until the desired position is reached, that is, when the two radiopack ends of the stent are respectively above and below the upper and lower cutaneous markers. When the stent is in the correct position, the guide wire can be removed. At this point, the stent tube comes out from the patient's mouth and it must be moved through the nostril. The probe is introduced through the nostril and retrieved from the mouth using a laryngoscope and McGill forceps. Then, it is inserted into the stent tube and retracted until the tube comes out of the nostril. The device is completed by the application of the small silicone bar and the double port for feeding and drugs. The stent tube is passed through the hole in the silicone bar with the aid of Kelly forceps. The bar slides on the stent tube until it is in contact with the nostril. In this way, the possible displacement of the stent during swallowing is reduced. A final radiological check allows to verify the correct position of the stent in relation to the radiopack skin markers. To prevent the bar from slipping on the stent tube, it is necessary to apply a suture thread, which can be removed and replaced if necessary. During swallowing, it is normal to see the bar tilting slightly as a proof of the natural mobility of the stent, which may be intentionally favored by the patient. However, if the bar appears too far outside the nostril or excessively adherent to the nostril, it is an indication to perform X-ray to exclude the stent displacement. It is possible that the stent tube stretches slightly with body heat. Therefore, it is suggested to place the stent about 2 cm above the proximal end of the stricture. At the end, the stent tube is fixed to the patient's check. The procedure 
is now completed.